Rachel, thank you very much indeed for coming to the YouTube site this morning. And you're representing uh, Wild at Heart, specifically the Be Kind program, and because I know you're the education campaign manager. Now, could you first please outline um, the Be Kind program? Because that's what I'm particularly interested in. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much for having me as well. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. So I'll tell you a little bit of background about uh, the charity that I work for. So Wild at Heart Foundation, uh, we are a dog welfare and rescue charity and we were founded by an amazing woman who's called Nikki Tibbles. Um, and our mission is to compassionately reduce the stray dog population around the world. And we do this through adoption, sterilisation and education projects globally. Uh, and some of the countries we've worked in are places such as Greece, Bulgaria, South Africa, Lebanon, Mexico, South Korea. It really is a global charity, um, but we believe that education is paramount in helping us to achieve this mission. And that by educating young people, we can help create a generation who care about all living beings. Um, yes. So the Be Kind program is, is our first sort of UK education projects that we've launched um, and it's brand new and it was launched at the beginning of this academic year. Um, it's designed for UK schools and currently aimed at Key Stage 2 students um, and it's kindly been funded by Manolo Blahnik um, and it aims to help children develop skills in empathy, kindness, compassion and understanding which are our key ethos and what we believe in as a charity um, but we do this through using the story of a rescue dog and the dogs that we work with as a bit of a metaphor to help explore their own emotions. Yes. Um, and we hope that we can help them to show kindness to others, animals, but also most importantly to themselves throughout the programme. What, kind of, what part of the curriculum would you say this all encompasses in the primary school curriculum? Because I know you've started with Key Stage 2 with the learning resources you've provided. Yeah, so our main national curriculum link is very much PSHE, strong focus on well-being, self-awareness. However, we have tried to keep it quite cross-curricular if we can. Um, so quite a lot of science looking at um, dog behaviour, dog body language, also human body language. Um, and then we look at geography as well when we explore the work that Wild Art Heart Foundation do, like I mentioned before, all of our global projects. Um, yes. But we, we had a few trials of the programme done at the last end of last academic year, and we found that a really strong curriculum link that came out of that was actually through speaking and listening, um, because converse, conversation, sharing ideas and opinions is a really substantial part of actually delivering the programme um, and encouraging children to have the confidence to talk about their feelings and also developing the skill of listening to other people as well. I mean, I may mention key stage two, but uh, you're you're looking towards the future. You're also thinking and speaking to teachers about adapting it for younger children as well. Yeah, definitely. We this is um, sort of our first dabble with the program. We thought key stage two would be a great age group to start with, and um, we did have one lovely school trial it with a key stage one group that went really well. They had to edit it edit it quite heavily depending on their students needs yeah. um, mm -hmm. but in the future we really want to make specific resources for other education audiences um, and our next group is actually going to be key stage one. Excellent oh, well that's really good news I mean you've talked about the linkage to the national curriculum um, but of course in terms of its linkage you've talked about the geography and the PSHE uh, and the well-being um, and you, you would you would say perhaps that the resources that you provide on your website and more details of that later um, are linked in those areas, particularly PSHE. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> as part of the workbooks, there are lesson plans with resources that go alongside it. And on each lesson plan, we write down which curriculum link we feel is strongest. All yes. of them are PSHE, 
Um, but then, as I mentioned, we have things like geography and science, um, but speaking and listening as well. That's 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 great. And it, it, to gain access to uh, that, there's I think they're free resources, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, they are. Um, so to gain access, how, how, how does that happen? So to gain access, all you have to do is go to our Be Kind page on our website and there's a short form um, where you can pop in details, just name of school and email address and stuff. And you'll be sent a link uh, to the resources and a password to go alongside it. Um, and it's all completely free. As I mentioned, it have five workbooks that contain lesson plans, activities, different worksheets. We've tried to make them very flexible um, because we know all school communities are completely different, all classes look different. Um, so we want to not be too prescribed in what we're providing, but we also want to be thorough enough so you can pick it up and go because it is a self-led program. Uh, mm. We do estimate that it will take about 10 hours to complete the whole program. Quite chunky, it's quite meaty, but yes. you can um, pick and choose how often you want to pick it up. You could do it over in an intense week or over two terms. Um, it's just meant to be used as a tool that you can adapt and, and use with your class as you wish. You mentioned dogs as being a, a metaphor in terms of carrying out this program. But uh, are there instances where looking at looking at my backdrop there with the dog and the children around the dog, um, a dogs can actually be brought in for petting and seeing and finding out more about how to look after dogs. Does that occur? So as part, of, as part of our program, um, hmm. we don't work directly with dogs, mainly because the dogs that we um, yes work within the charity of quite complex backgrounds, but we know that so many schools are working with um, therapy dogs and support dogs, um, and they are an incredible asset. They're an amazing thing for schools to be able to engage with. Um, mm. There's so much research into what dogs can do for us. They yes. get us outside, the stroking a dog actually reduces blood pressure. They teach us so much, so we, say that our program really complements a school that works with a dog, but it isn't compulsory. Mm. I mean, on your website it says, students will develop key skills in empathy, compassion, kindness, and understanding, whilst learning about the positive impact dogs can have on our well-being. So you've sort of covered that in a way quite, quite well, but uh, in terms of the future, do you think it might be a good idea to um, commission some research to see how the impact of your program could have on children's learning. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we'd love to be able to look at it in more detail. And at the beginning and the end of the program, the students are given a survey to complete, which looks at their strengths in empathy, kindness, compassion, and understanding. Then they reflect on that at the end. Um, there's no right or wrong answers. We're all built differently. And that's like the message throughout the program. Um, but it's just we want to see whether their skills do develop. Um, mm. Teacher feedback will be a massive part of it as well. So we'll be sending out surveys um, and continuing to evaluate and also change the program if necessary. We want it to be really relevant to now. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be an exciting, exciting I mean, that journey. That's terrific because you're gathering data now, which can be be used in the future. So researchers will already have that data, and almost in the mixed methods, they they might want to go and observe or pick up the records, as we've said, and from that come to some sort of analysis. So I think that that is great to hear that you are actually uh, collecting feedback forms, and I think that's that's quite quite helpful. Um, in, in terms of the support that the wild, because it mentions on the website also about the support that the Wild at Heart Foundation education team can provide. What other support, apart from the resources of the website and the website itself, of course, is like support. What other support is there uh, coming from your organization? So the main support at the moment is just 
being able to get in touch whenever you want. Um, so we have an email address, which is education at wild.heartfoundation.org. Um, and teachers can get in touch if they have queries, they have need additional help, yeah. um, feedback, anything. Um, but in the future, we want to explore doing um, some additional webinars, um, maybe staff training sessions. If people want it to be a whole school initiative, we'd be very happy to do something around an inset day. Um, and because it's so new, we're completely open to ideas. So just would love people to get in touch as much as possible. Well, I think that's fantastic. Uh, provide you mentioned uh, teacher development as well, and it's an area that schools increasingly, in fact, a lot of them are there already on well-being and the sorts of material that's been provided on web, on the on the workbooks is brilliant. And I'm de delighted to hear that you'll be open to webinars and other activities for teachers and children. So. Uh, and also, I believe the session, you're, you're not actually doing sessions for children in school. You're just providing the materials. Have I got that right? You're not actually going into schools, particularly at the moment, of course. At the moment, we're not. We're just focusing on the downloadable resources. But again, it's something that we'd love to do in the future. Um, yeah. As the programme grows and as the team will hopefully grow, we can go into schools or even do online workshops. Well, the digital technology mm. uh, could be an easy access way of, of arranging for a school, part of an assembly, part of a class project to, to be in, in, included. And then obviously the uh, learning resources could then follow uh, the discussions because the advantage of digital technology, of course, it can be interactive with the children, asking questions and so forth, and saving you petrol, for instance. <laughs> yeah, of course, which is very relevant at the moment. Uh, and well, also gets yeah. over the barrier of um, also dogs in schools. If it's not appropriate, we could always have digital sessions with dogs as well. So it's something that we're very interested in exploring. Yes. Um, and that's why we want people to get in touch as much as possible. Any ideas, any ways that we can support and help, we'd mm. love to be able to. I think that's a great idea, having sort of dogs live on the screen for mm. the children to see and talking about the dog and its history and, uh, you know, perhaps it, it, where it had come from and, and how it been tended and looked after and how its behaviour has changed over time um is is amazing so uh, i i do applaud that if that's possible in the future so is there anything else you wanted to add to our little discussion about your wonderful organization um, super yeah so we have um five workbooks that are designed to take students on a bit of a journey uh, from understanding what what at heart foundation do why we believe in kindness to being kind to themselves and finishing with putting kindness into action and making a change in their community. So I'll give a brief description of each one. So our first one's called Be Kind, um, yeah. and that just introduces them to the programme, uh, the skills that they'll be developing, what Wild at Heart Foundation do. And they're also introduced to a dog called Lucky, who's our metaphorical uh, rescue dog. And he is a constant throughout all of the workbooks. Um, and we put him in different situations um, and use him as an example to reflect on how different people might be feeling. Um, yes. We then move on to exploring emotions. And a large part of this one is looking at body language, particularly the body language of dogs who are nonverbal. Um, and then looking at how we as humans express our feelings on the outside when we're feeling a certain way on the inside. I think they use examples of licking lips and wagging tails and sometimes <laughs> they can be mis misinterpreted. So that was quite a fascinating read for me. So that's number two. What about yeah. number three? Number three is then understanding emotions and we use uh, the zones of regulation as part of this, which is very, very popular within schools. Um, but it's trying to um, encourage students to understand they're feeling a certain way and that's absolutely okay but it's vital to know that won't last forever and how can we take the steps to get us to feel comfortable and back in our green zone again. Yeah. Um, the next one leads on from that and is um, all about well-being which is a word that's used so much at the moment but it's very relevant. Um, this is number four, yes. Number four. Um, and we look at 
at uh, the bios of dogs that are adopted through our website um, mm -hmm. and the fact that they all have different requirements, different needs, different homes. And that's just like us, for us to feel safe, happy and loved. We all need different things throughout our life. And then finally, number five is all about putting all of the skills that they have learned into action and doing a social action project, um, whether that's uh, going out into the community and creating a community garden to get people outside or making a poster or doing a talk in assembly or fundraising. Um, but it's all about ensuring the children find something that they really care about and a cause they want to make a change in and they want to make a difference. You sent me some uh, children's work actually and one was on uh, homelessness for instance another one was action plan so mm. I'll, I'll put those up on the screen for people to see um, so it's nice to see some output from the children and their, th their, their actual thoughts about how they could um, participate or raise people's awareness on particular areas of concern so that's great well what can I say that's fantastic thank you very much indeed Rachel thank you for your time you. today and uh, I look forward to the development of this new be kind um, program thank you very much no thank you so much for your time bye for now bye thank you